Our gospel reading today, since we've already read it uh, in our call to worship, we're going to go to John 12, 12 through 16. The next day, a great crowd who had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young ass and sat upon it, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, sitting on an ass's colt. His disciples did not understand this at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that this had been written of him and had been done to him. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Eternal championship. Everyone wants to win a championship. So few get the chance to win one, or so it seems. Life is a journey, a journey that no one takes the same path. We all have different roads to the Lord. Our paths may cross, but it is the cross that makes us all champions at some point. If we get there, if we commit, if we strive to be godlike, and most importantly, that we believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord, as our Savior. May we celebrate the coming of Christ to the city, to our own lives. Yes, we are champions, champions in Jesus Christ. It's easy to talk about championships during the month of March, for who hasn't heard of March Madness and all the basketball championships that are won and lost during this time of the year? Miracles and championships, marching towards a championship. Or are we? Do we even know what we are marching for sometimes? What are we even celebrating anyway? A team? A coach? A school or university? What are we marching towards in life or in death? We are marching for Christ. We may all forget that sometimes. We may put down our palms and look for others to pick up our enthusiasm for God. We can sometimes have what seems to be nothing more to give. We just cannot celebrate. We fall short in our cheering on our most important champion in life and in death, Jesus Christ. We fail to come out of our comfort zone and celebrate what our Lord and Savior truly means in our lives. Most people probably never get to feel the excitement of entering a gym or a field or a theater and have all the applause and attention of what may seem like a hero. Most could never understand what Jesus must have felt that day he rode into Jerusalem, the shouting, the crying, the blessings, the love. Yes, everyone had finally seen the King of the Jews, the Messiah, the Lord our God, the King of Israel, right in front of them. It must have felt like a championship game won on a final shot. Everyone celebrating and loving on Jesus Christ. Hosanna in the highest. What a sight it must have been. Palm Sunday is the beginning of the holiest week on the Christian calendar and Easter. Sorry kids, Christmas is a close second. And there is an Easter bunny, so let's, you know, let's think of the positives here. Championship, championship week, if you will, is upon us. How will we celebrate? How will we remember all that the Lord our God has done for us? And what is really a championship anyhow? Is it a state championship? A college championship? An NBA championship? Or how about world championship in the Olympics? What, if any, could be considered the championship in any sport or even in the game of life? What could be considered the ultimate championship, the best of the best? Well, friends, we are the champions. 
We are the champions because Christ loved us enough to live a sinless life before teaching and preaching his way to the cross. We get to live like champions, not just here on earth, but forever in heaven with God our Father. All because Jesus Christ died and rose again for our sins. That is the real championship, Christ dying for our sins. Without the fulfillment of the prophets, we would have no way to know what Jesus was talking about as he made his way to the cross. We are given the word which leads us to believe with our hearts and minds and souls what the Lord did for us by going to the cross. He died for our sins, but not before he was first honored and loved by all those people in Jerusalem on that Palm Sunday. The life and times of Jesus Christ living among the people was about to end because there must be the fulfillment of the word. And though there was much celebration on that day, Palm Sunday, soon there would be anger and hate towards the king of Israel. Hosanna in the highest would soon be killed beside two robbers and other witnesses. All of this for the fulfillment of the word. If Jesus is the king, then all of his loyal subjects must recognize his kingship. The Jews did this by calling him the son of David and spreading their cloaks before him. This was done due to ancient customs where people would throw down their garments to make a carpet for the royal procession. This represents people recognizing his sovereignty by laying out our hearts before him, throwing down our wills in absolute surrender, inviting Jesus to govern everything we think and say and do. Then we praise our rightful king. This was acknowledged in our last hymn by Theodolf of Orleans. All glory, laud, and honor to thee, Redeemer, King, to whom the lips of children made sweet Hosanna ring. Thou art the King of Israel, thou David's royal son, who in the Lord's name comest, the King and Blessed One. When I think of championship teams, I think of those who usually led the team in scoring or the coaches that were the leaders. Many championships are won because of talent, but it takes a lot of work to pull a group together in order to win at a high level. One must sacrifice time and know that it will not be easy if there is to be an opportunity to win a championship. Very few championship teams just show up and win. They work together, find ways to make each other better. They also push you to be the best, to be your best. And they let you know when you are not giving your best effort. There must be accountability in order to have a team come together and build a championship culture. There must be a leader. There must be sacrifice. The real sacrifice in this life is the one we will be experiencing this week. Seeing our Lord and Savior take his promise to us to the cross. God led him there. And we must remember, if only once a year, that the championships were won, one after another, all the way from Jesus' birth to his death on the cross. We are the beneficiaries of the eternal championship that only God could have provided for us through the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Only he can lead us to eternal life because of what he sacrificed that day. We may celebrate one week from the day that Jesus Christ is risen, but it took many wins along the way to fulfill what the word said would be the resurrection of the King of Kings. Jesus' triumphant ride into Jerusalem and all the pomp and circumstance was only one championship win and a long list of victories for God and his people, all of us. We now get to sit in victory because of our King. We are given new life in him 
If we can just look to him for all of our issues in this life. As we learn to live a life with Christ in our lives, we must not forget the journey that we all took to get there. Think of all the wins, and yes, the losses, that helped lead us to where we are in our life. Look to Christ for all that he has to offer us in our loneliest of times, in our best moments, our championship moments with Christ. There are no single championships in any sport or life that can ever compare to the eternal championship we are blessed to celebrate today and every day thanks to Jesus Christ. We have won. God has won. Jesus has won. And because we have God in our hearts and minds, we have asked for forgiveness through our sinful life, and Jesus has hit the final shot the winning shot. Celebrate this Palm Sunday as though you have just won the lottery of life, the championship of championships, the eternal championship with Jesus Christ as our hero and savior. May we all learn to give ourselves and follow the King, the one and only God in heaven forever and ever. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, we are here today to celebrate your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to see the game that has been played for our lives, and that through Jesus Christ we have won our eternal life. Thank you, God, for this holy week, and may it change us forever. In your name, amen.